Have you ever walked onto a movie set and while you're trying to make some new connections by talking to random people, you bring up your new LED purchase with the key grip and uh, you receive a very less than enthusiastic answer like, uh, yeah, I use it a couple times or yeah, it's nice for a small light, but I prefer this and it's pointing at the huge 10K rigged above you. The truth is that big productions, at least in my experience and at least here in Italy, are still using tungsten lights the majority of the times. And uh, one obvious reason is that those lights are a lot cheaper to rent and if you need a lot of units and for a long period of time, it's gonna make a huge difference to the budget. But one thing that I noticed talking with uh, gaffers and uh, electricians is that they seem to be a lot more excited when talking about tungsten compared to LED, but not in terms of cost of renting, that they, they don't care about that, but in terms of quality of lights. I love tungsten because it's like, it's like butter or cream, you're not, it's not synthetic, it's just pure resistant lighting. It's got a very nice quality to it. So I asked myself, does tungsten make sense for a um, filmmaker with a small crew or even a solo filmmaker? I wanted to put it to the test and uh, since I was looking around for buying a new light, Yes, I'm a little addicted. Instead of going straight for an LED, I decided to rent a Ari T1 to test it before eventually buy it. And uh, if you're as curious as me about how it compares in a practical environment, well, we're gonna figure it out. What I'm interested to see is how the tungsten compares to the LED on skin tones specifically, because as humans, we are very sensitive to how they're rendered. And since tungsten has a very high color rendition, I wanna see if the LED is going to keep up with that. Maybe yes, maybe no. And uh, also if the differences on the final picture quality, if there's any, are noticeable enough to justify all the hustle that comes with uh, incandescent lights, like more power consumption, more heat, more weight, the bulb failing on you in the middle of shooting. Okay, let's get some readings out of the way first. So I measured both lights, my Godox UL 150 and the RET1 Fresnel with a light meter at one meter distance from the wall. The Godox with the reflector on came in at 10,000 lux at the center of the beam. The RET1 on full flood came in at 3200 lux, but adjusting the spread of the light to match the one from the LED reflector, it also came in at around 10,000 lux. And by spotting it all the way, I got a reading of 19,000 lux at the center of the beam. Okay, now that we got the technical stuff out of the way, let's compare the two lights on a medium shot first. I am bouncing the light off of a uh, sheet of muslin and added two flags in order to prevent the light from uh, spilling everywhere. The RFNL is set in between flood and spot to have a uh, similar spread to the reflector mounted on the LED. And uh, let's compare the two. So the two images are going through the same exact color pipeline. Here in the white shot, there are some differences as the LED seem to have a uh, slightly more greenish tint to it, while the tungsten appears more neutral. So I would say that in this particular example, I prefer the tungsten over the LED, but it's definitely not night and day. Let's go for a medium shot to better look at skin tones and see what we get. And we can clearly see the green tint from the LED and the more neutral skin tones with the tungsten. And the same in the close-up where I just moved the, my girlfriend closer to the bounce to soften the light a bit. So yeah, there are some differences between the two lights, but nothing that can't be addressed with some simple printer lights adjustments in my opinion. In fact, if we correct for the green tint in the LED shots, the images ended up looking basically identical to me. Just uh, bear in mind that I'm using a Sony FX3 for this comparison and uh, maybe with a higher end camera, I would have been able to pick up more subtle differences between the two, but not sure. So what do I think? Well, all the cons about tungsten that everyone talks about are definitely there, but it's cheaper to rent, cheaper to buy, 
because you can find very good deals for some used units or you can just go for uh, RE replicas that sell new for pretty cheap. So for the same amount of money, you get slightly more output and if you spot it all the way, you get a lot more output. Uh, but obviously consume a lot more power so and also a nice thing is that uh, a Fresnel comes with the Fresnel lens which is very nice when having to control the light spread compared to the hyper reflector that comes with the majority of the LEDs on the market. Yes, you can buy a Fresnel attachment for the LED, but that's an expense on top of the price of the light so you have to keep that in mind. Also if you're using multiple units Tungsten lights are way easier to uh, match to each other in terms of color temperature because basically they will have the same color temperature while LEDs have some discrepancies there between manufacturers. So I don't think there is a uh, definitive answer. They're just different and uh, they both have their pros and cons. Am I going to buy a tungsten light? Probably not just yet. I prefer the ease of use of uh, LED, uh, especially as a uh, solo filmmaker, but I definitely liked working with it and I think that every filmmaker should give it a try to see if uh, tungsten fits their needs. That's all for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please let me know by leaving a thumbs up, by commenting, subscribing, and uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.